Hello everyone and welcome to the Sports Sit Down. I'm your host, Sine Sangani, and today we have our original crew back as long, uh, along with a special guest. Nate is here, CJ is here, and Kieran. Today we have a special guest from Pinewood Basketball. Her name is Hannah Jump. She plays basketball for Pinewood and next year she's decided to take her talents to eight miles south to Sanford. Pinewood Basketball has been one of the best in the nation She's gonna be she's gonna be playing for Stanford next year, and also uh, they played yesterday against Carondelet, and they won. Hannah, you're one of the best players. ESPN's ranked you number 50 in the country, which is awesome. Uh, prep to prep, all Central Coast first team, Bay Area News Group, all area first team, San Francisco Chronicle, all Metro first team. You're averaging 16 points per game, and you also have committed to Stanford, as I just said, and called one of the best pure shooters by one scout. How does it make you feel to be this recognized as a high school athlete early on? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. It's been a pretty great experience. Um, it's definitely taken a lot of you know, hard work and dedication, but um, I wouldn't trade where I am for anything. And the people I've met along the way have been absolutely incredible and really some of my uh, best friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I mean, you said hard work and determination. Like, uh, soon you've been playing basketball for most of your life. Like, what uh, players, NBA or WNBA, inspired you during that process? Um, yeah, NBA, I would say Kobe Bryant, just the, his mentality towards the game. Um, and then WNBA, I mean, she's new, but um, from Stanford, uh, Carly Samuelson, oh, just yeah. like her shooting, and I really admire that. Um, okay, so speaking of Stanford, what do you think you can bring to that team next year, and, and, and what are your main strengths? Um, I'd say my shooting ability would definitely be one of my main strengths and just to give them the opportunity to stretch the floor on offense and allow um, the ball to be going in and out um, for the three-point or the post opportunities, so yeah. What, me? <laughs> what, me? I didn't know it was probably, sorry. My bad. So you lost last year in the state, CF State Finals to, to Windward. Unfortunately, they ended up losing. I believe it was Clovis North. But, you know, maybe getting to face them again, would that have really been a big treat, you know, a chance to do maybe, you know, right what happened last year? Yeah, um, if we play them again, it will definitely be a chance of revenge. Um, we didn't play our best when we played them last year in the state final. Um, so to have that opportunity to play them again would be incredible. Okay, and, you know, also since, you know, I know you guys got to go to Hawaii earlier in the year for a tournament. Um, what's your best memory of that, just going out? I mean, probably just besides going out to Hawaii. Just yeah. Going to Hawaii. <laughs> um, yeah, Hawaii was incredible. You know, we got to do a lot of fun stuff, but then also on the basketball court, winning the whole tournament was absolutely great. Um, we beat the number 12 team in the nation at that point. Um, so, yeah, it was just an overall incredible experience. Okay, cool. And, I mean, you've also, yeah, you face a bunch of familiar foes. I mean, St. Mary's out of Stockton, yeah. Carondelet. Unfortunately, you're not facing Mitty because they, they lost to Salesian. And then, of course, Windward, who's also out, which is kind of disappointing. But, you know, is it, is it, did it kind of start feeling like a rhythm? It's like, okay, we're facing, okay, we're, we know who we're facing first round. We're facing one of these, like, five teams. You know, did, did that make it easier or kind of harder when you, when you get to the state tournament? Um, yeah, I'd probably say it would make it harder. Um, we, we've been playing these teams for a couple years now, and they know the way we like to play, but also we know the way they like to play. Um, so we know their strengths and can take that kind of away. So I feel um, it kind of has both, both sides to it. So you guys started the year on a 12-game run streak. Like, what did you do as like a coach and a team before the season to get in such a good rhythm Like before you've even played a game? Yeah, um, in preseason, we spent a lot of time not just on the basketball court, but also working on conditioning and weights, and that um, all really helps um, in our game um, for our strength and the ability for conditioning. So, yeah, all the hard work we put in before we even step on the basketball court is a huge, um, huge, huge thing. Yeah. All right, so let's move a little bit to the other side. Um, actually, first, let's talk about the coach. Uh, so you, you've had the opportunity to be coached by the great coach, Doc Shepler, all four years of, at Pinewood. What impact has he made on your life and then your basketball career? Yeah, Doc's an amazing coach. Um, not just basketball-wise, but, you know, the confidence he instills in all of us. Um, if I'm missing my first couple of shots, the first thing he'll tell me is, keep shooting, the next one's going in. So he definitely instills that confidence in me as a player. And then uh, talking basketball-wise, um, he's such a great shooting coach.
but um, all around, he's just an amazing person. Yeah, I believe he was Jeremy Lin's shooting coach yeah, when, he was. Was at, when he was at Pally. And he's also just, uh, I've, I've met Doc multiple times, and he's a really uh, funny and really nice guy. Yeah. So, yeah. Pro tip, if you want to be a coach, you should be named Doc. Doc Rivers, <laughs> Doc <Sean laughs> Shepard. Well, there we go. All right, okay, so ha so let's move a little bit, as I just hinted at before, towards the recruitment process. How does it feel when you get that first offer? Because I know for football, um, football is obviously a little bit more grueling sport, but I'm not going to discount basketball's physicality here. But when you get that first offer, how does it feel? And also, what is the next step? Because some players in football, especially, they, they like to sit out for some playoff games to make sure they don't get injured and stuff. Yeah. Uh, talk me through that process. Um, yeah, getting that first offer was definitely like, wow, like all my hard work, hard work has finally uh, paid off. Um, but for me, it definitely wasn't like, okay, now I can just kind of relax. It was kind of like, okay, now I want to work more on my games and when I get to the next level, I can play at the highest level I can. Yeah, you know, speaking of the recruitment process, uh, Stanford has the number two recruiting class in the country, uh, including them one player, Haley Jones. and. Uh, uh, excuse me. They how 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 does that like? What goals do you have for this this group of uh, talented young players? Yeah, it's going to be really great, and I'm really excited. Um, I think, I mean, our goal as a team would definitely be to win the whole thing. I think that's, mm -hmm. I mean, their goal every season. Um, but going in, I just honestly just can't wait to just meet all the girls and just have a really great time and improve my game. Mm -hmm. uh, have you met? I mean, you obviously faced off here, but have you had a chance to talk with yeah, her? Yeah, I actually played um, throughout the summer with Haley. We play on the same club team, so we're right. really great friends, and I'm really excited to play with, with her, not against her next year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, as, a, as a student athlete, I mean, how do you, how do you balance, uh, of course, getting into Stanford, one of the top universities in the country, how, do you, how did you uh, balance academics with basketball? Yeah, it's definitely been challenging sometimes. Um, I really had to work on my time management, and especially if we have a game one night and then I have tests the next day. But using the weekends, like Sundays, um, we don't have team practices. I you know, have my own training, but have more time to really get my studies done. So I really try and get it done on Sundays. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's talk about your performances as of late now, Nate. In the CIF tournament, of course. Um, you, you guys uh, had a big game uh, against St. Mary's this past week, and you had a double double with 20 points and 11 rebounds. I mean, how did you feel about uh, how did you feel about your performance and the team's performance during that game? Yeah, I mean that game was pretty special. Um, freshman year, you know, we beat St. Mary's when they were the number one team in the nation, mm -hmm. and then last year we upset them again. Um, so you know, we really battled versus that team. Um, but I think you know having those two wins under our belt really gave us the confidence to come in. Um, and play at our highest level. Personally, like my performance, I mean, as long as our team wins, it doesn't really mm -hmm. matter to me. Um, but I'll do whatever it takes to, uh, you know, get our team to that point. Maybe, maybe St. Mary should stop facing you in the playoffs. It's <laughs> kind of like they see you and just, oh, okay, we're going to put a loss, we're going to walk out, yeah. see, you, see you later. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was at that game Wednesday, really good game uh, from all sides in the Panther pit. And, uh, you know, when a St. Mary's player was at the uh, free or throw line, a uh, Couple students, including one of my friends, uh, they performed a pregnancy. Pause. Uh, explain. <laughs> okay. Exactly. So basically, what they did, they got this giant blanket, and they had uh, one student just sit down, legs spread wide open, screaming, and then uh, my friend popped out of the blanket, and then uh, he was held by another student as if he was uh, coming out of yeah. the womb and that <laughs> stuff. Um, I mean, did you see that? And like, was it too far? Um. Yeah, I saw it, but. Um, I think it's pretty great. The mm -hmm. things that they do to try and distract the other team, the support we get from our school is absolutely amazing. The Panther Pit shows out every single game for us when we need them. Um, and I think anything they can do to help us win is truly incredible. Wait, was this during a free throw? Or yeah, like free throw. throw. Yeah. <laughs> so you were on the court? Or yes. Did you start, oh, wow. what the? Wait, wait. <laughs> did, the, 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 did she miss a free throw? She missed both she free did, throws, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. That works. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we, section yeah. There, do it. We, we, we have a really good student <laughs> section. Yeah. <laughs> So you guys lost to Karanda early in the year, and then you beat them obviously last night. What was that like revenge like for you? Yeah, when we lost them earlier in the year, it was definitely not our best game. You know, they came out and played probably a perfect game for them. So to come out last night and to get that win was huge for us, and a huge boost of confidence going into our game on Tuesday. Uh, I mean, speaking of that game uh, last night in Concord, uh, the, the Pinewood, uh, I went uh, with on the bus uh, all the way up to uh, Concord, an hour and a half drive. Uh, like having having like a big section of a student section come out 
Uh, what does that mean to you guys? It means everything to us. We really appreciate all the support that our school shows. And, you know, we had more students there than even mm -hmm. the homeschool did. Oh, yeah. And that was huge. A lot louder as it well. really felt like we louder. were, yeah, a lot louder. It really felt like we were at home and playing in front of our home crowd just means truly everything to us. Yeah, the, uh, the whole full bus full of one, one hour of noise as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, so upcoming, uh, you have a game at home yep. against uh, Salesian Prep. I plan to be there. Um, uh, <laughs> What, do you got, what will you guys have to do to win this key game? Um, I think the main thing will be really staying out of foul trouble. Um, we played them twice early in their season. We beat them once. We lost to them once. And the time we lost, um, again, we didn't play great. We had a lot of foul trouble going into that. Um, so I really think staying out of foul trouble will be a big key. Mm -hmm. And you know, especially since I've gone to Salesian, I play baseball, so we had to go up there for some tournaments. And it's weird because their baseball field, they're right their kitty corner from them. If you've gone there, you're in Richmond High right across. And it's weird because I'm looking and it's like, I know a little bit about them. It's like their sports, it's like eh, not super good. And it's like, whoa, they're good at sports for like basketball? I didn't yeah. like, you be there and it's like, whoa, that's so weird. So oh, it's kind of cool though. You think about it, it's like it's in yeah. Richmond and you're like, you don't think of Richmond as a sports city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, unless you're in Virginia, but that's beside yeah. the point. <laughs> let's, uh, let's move, moving on to uh, what you, what's going on next year for you. I mean, uh, you, you're going, you're obviously going to Stanford as we mentioned before, uh, but what made you choose Stanford during the recruiting process? Yeah, um, Stanford has always kind of been my dream school since I was a little girl starting playing basketball. Um, but really just a combination of the best academics and the best basketball. And it's close to home so my parents can come and watch me play. Um, and really it's just, it's just everything I've ever dreamed of. That's good. I mean, and what's the process been like? I mean, like, I know for a lot of sports it's really rough. For football it's, it's really rough. For basketball it's rough. For softball I know a lot of people do it. Baseball, everything. You know, are there any tips maybe you could give people who are going through that and are kind of like, Stressing out, I haven't got an offer from yeah. like a D1 or a D2, or oh, the only offer I've gotten is from this school in like Iowa, and it's not where <laughs> I want to go. It's yeah, it, I, I I'm dealing with it too. <laughs> Shout out to Iowa though. Yeah, Shout Iowa's all. Iowa. We love Iowa. we love Iowa. Mm -hmm. Um, no, yeah, I mean, I think really the thing about the recruiting process is finding the school that's a perfect fit for you, not necessarily the school that's the best um, or that's you know, deemed as one of the highest um, ranked schools out there, but just finding somewhere that you fit with the coaching staff, with the players, um, and even academically, um, if you want to challenge yourself or just finding that perfect fit is really just what you need. And then, yeah, honestly, I think that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, there we go. When would you say it's like early to commit? Because I know you did it last year, right? Um, uh, junior, junior season. Jun that's that's okay. normal for most junior years. Yeah. So, like, is it so... Oh, that's not really. No, really. No. no. My bad. Um, so, <laughs> so for basketball, I mean, 13, that's, I mean the thirteen-year-old quarterback who committed to USC like a <laughs> while that's ago. Early. That's, that's, yeah. that's, that's early. That's early. That's a little okay, unnecessary. Okay, okay. High school is normal. Yeah, I think <clears throat> <Lincoln. clears throat> once you once you go to a school and you see it, you kind of know if it's the right fit mm -hmm. for you. And whenever you kind of have that feeling, is probably the right time to commit. Uh, which Stanford player, either who who's going to be on the team next year, either like a rising freshman or a returning player, uh, which of those players are you most looking forward to playing with? Um, honestly, I'm really excited to play with this whole team. But um, like I said earlier, being able to play with Haley will be pretty great, um, you know, from playing, playing against her all these years. Um, but yeah, I'm really just excited to go out there and just meet all the girls and play with them. Yeah, I, I know, I mean, I, I don't know her name, but I believe one of the recruits that they got this year uh, she can like alley oop the ball and dunk it, which I Brand. think is yeah, yeah. I, it's crazy. Uh, but yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty nice. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the league after college, WNBA. So WNBA players have been vocal about the pay gap between NBA and WNBA. Uh, it's a pretty big controversy. A lot of NBA players are on the WNBA side, mm -hmm. but they should get yeah. paid more and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it's great that, you know, they're speaking out um, and advocating for um, the equality of um, women in sports. Right. Um, I think, you know, we put in the same hard work and time mm -hmm. that men do. Um, and like you said, many of the men are even backing us on this. And I think that equality is something that, you know, we're slowly creeping towards, but we're nowhere near where we need to be at this point. Um, but, yeah, I, I definitely agree with everything you guys Yeah, said. I was reading a great story um, earlier today that, and WMA players, even though they play professionally here, they actually have to go overseas mm -hmm. to places like Russia, Ukraine, or wherever it is. Yeah. Um, and they play two seasons 
So it's, it's, just, it's really the grueling. Play that season, return, play the You're season. Exactly. Yeah, and they get no yeah, off time, so exactly. no time to rest their bodies and anything. It's like yeah. travel baseball at 12. <laughs> <laughs> Kieran, you would know. I would. You would know. No off season. Mm -hmm. So speaking of the WNBA, uh, under Coach Vanderveer, there have been a lot of um, Stanford players who have gone to the WNBA, uh, a couple of number one picks as well. What do you hope to learn from her? Uh, in the years after that. Yeah, you know, Tara is a really great coach. I'm really excited to be able to play in her system um, and just really understand basketball from the way that she sees it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that someday coaching is something that I'm looking at um, probably going right. to do. Um, so, you know, to be under her at Stanford will be great and to learn how she views the game and um, get some tips from that. Okay, and uh, what are you looking forward to the most and what can our viewers expect you from me next year? Um, man, I don't know. I think just the whole kind of Stanford experience is really what I'm looking forward to. And then on the basketball court, just hopefully just getting out there, making an impact, and doing all I can to, you know, help our team win next year. So you guys play soon, right, against Solution. Who is that? And then they play winner of what, Clovis? Northern yeah. And who's Clovis uh, West. Clovis West, and oh, my bad, Clovis. Sierra Canyon. Yeah. yeah. Oh, who, Sierra who, Canyon. And I get their pretty good team. Oh. Um, personally, I think Windward to get revenge for last year. Okay, well, okay. X-Nang, because they're now in the tournament. <laughs> I know, but um, I have some friends on Clovis West, so that would be really great to play mm -hmm. them. Um, but really, we're just going to need to take it one game at a time. Exactly. We have to focus on yeah. Sleesian on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. We okay, have lost to them, mm -hmm. so we have to really focus on that before we can think ahead. So is there like a player, I know he has team, but is there a player that you really look forward to playing? Or does it really matter? Um, like one player who you're like, I need to beat her. I don't know. I mean, I have friends honest. like on Clovis <laughs> West, so it would be great to play them. Um, but to be honest, just taking it one game at a time mm -hmm. is all we're thinking about right. right now. Okay, someone's, someone's been catching up on the Bull Durham cliches. Good. <laughs> good, good. I wasn't, I'm not the only one. Good. Okay, that's Hannah Jump uh, going to Stanford next year, playing currently at Pinewood. Uh, you can catch her Tuesday. Solution. Big um, game. Yeah. With this game. guy. Want to go home? Crowd. I'm going to be there. You should uh. film it. You should film that game. Mm -hmm. Two best CIFs like pay mm -hmm. us like 300 bucks. You, can, you, you guys can come out. Mm -hmm. I mean, it'd be. Hey, just invite me and I'll just uh -huh. show up. There's a Panther pit. pit. Mm -hmm. Will we have to, yeah. will we have to do whatever the pregnancy thing <laughs> is? Uh, I don't know what we have planned for Tuesday's game. Um, I was kind of just on the spot. I'm pretty sure. Like, we just like, oh, we have a blanket. Why not? We just uh, you know, perform, a, perform a pregnancy. That was. Wait, honestly though, like, what do you do? That's a spur of the moment. Yeah. You see that? I know. I'm surprised the ref didn't call it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm surprised the ref didn't just go look over and just go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Automatic. Oh, actually, I don't no. know if you can tee fans. Though. Yes, you can. Okay. You can. Oh, you can. No, they couldn't in college. Yeah, you yeah, definitely can. Yeah, you definitely can. Right. Is, is, that, is that the weirdest thing you've seen? <laughs> Probably, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Try, you, know, you try to find me something that's weirder than that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just making sure. I mean, the Panther Pit seems pretty weird. <laughs> no, they're great. We're, we're out there, man. We're out there. <laughs> okay, that's Hannah Jump. You can find her Tuesday, like I said, and also next year. So let's move on a little bit to talk about L.A. just for a little bit for the L.A. Lakers. <laughs> uh, they hit rock bottom, or maybe they haven't yet. We never know. Uh, they lost to the last place Phoenix Suns yesterday, 10th place in the West. Nice little 19% win. Oh, uh, yeah. Percentage, yeah. 19% yeah. win percentage. Currently, they have good. a better chance of, or I heard somewhere they have a better percentage chance to get into the, um, get a top pick than get to the playoffs. What do you expect? Wow. Uh, so, mm -hmm. guys, what's going on with LA? Right, let's just start with a step one. Why are we talking about Los Angeles on the north, on the, on the north side? Let's well, start with it's that. Always, we, guess, we know it's, 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 it's always a sports great. show, okay? Yeah. We're a sports show. We have to bring no, up. Here's my explanation. Though. It's always great when LA's doing bad. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay, Amen. but you need to Amen. start it like that. You can't go in with the whole, they're doing bad, let's talk about that. It's like, we're not ESPN in Los Angeles. We're not going to be like, so is LeBron failing again? Well, yes, he yes. is failing, evidently. What do you mean? Wait. LeBron's having the season. LeBron's he's having himself ditched, a he's year. He's basically told all his all his co-teammates, I'm running this team. If I don't want you, you're off. Well, he's mm -hmm. a better coach than Luke Walton, so, so yeah. I'm yeah, but, okay with him running yeah, that but team. It's the, yeah, but you got to look, dude. The Cavaliers were basically run by LeBron, and they won one title for all his... Well, I mean, I mean, Le Le LeBron as a whole, like it's th this, like this period uh, for, for the Lakers is gonna affect his legacy as like an all-time true. Well, I think. That is so true. Because yeah. he, because like you know, he was proven that he could lead it. He, he, I mean, he he doesn't really have anyone on this team, and like he hasn't and he hasn't been able to lead 
like a group of nobodies to like championships before. Tampering. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? So wait, I'll, I'll ask this, okay. Hannah, you said Kobe is your inspiration. Yeah. So who do you prefer, Kobe or LeBron? I mean, that's kind of an easy question. That's I a guess. very easy question. Okay. Kobe, Kobe? Bryant. Mm -hmm. Like, not even, cl not even close. No, not even, not even close. close. He's writing a book now. Yeah. Who, Kobe? Yeah. I mean, oh, another one. Oh, another one. Another one. He wrote Mamba oh, no, no. Mentality, which is a great book. Kobe I own it. also has an Oscar, so. He has yeah. an Oscar. <laughs> He's writing a basketball science fiction book. That sounds pretty mm -hmm. good. I know. I'll, yeah. I'm down to read I'm reading that. It. <laughs> Wait, so uh, LeBron James is also not the only problem. His supporting cast has also mm -hmm. been put when into question. I mean, I mean, you do have a couple injured players. I mean, Lonzo's injured, but, but he, I, that's not, not really affect. It's not going to affect. But he led the Cavaliers, who have less talent, now. to the finals. Mm. Less talent now. I remember would, also doing that. Last year's Cavs yeah, last have year's less talent, talent than this year's Lakers. Lakers. I feel like, they're the, that I feel the like they're the same. I think they're honestly very similar. Uh, mm -hmm. The only wow. plus that you have is Kyle Kuzma, which I think yeah. and Brandon okay. was as of late, mm -hmm. has been good. He's finally come to his senses mm -hmm. that his job on L.A. is on the line. But yeah. I think when you look at last year's Cavs team and you look at this year's Lakers team, I don't see much difference. Basically, it's mm -hmm. LeBron, everyone else. Well, I, thought, well, I feel yeah, like, I feel I like think... the, Lakers, the Lakers team is a lot more younger yeah. uh, than the Cavs team. Yeah. And right. And I, mean, I mean, experience does count. Kevin sure. Love was the second best player on last year's mm -hmm. team. Yeah. And, we, and he's this an all-star. Yeah, and and, and like, he's an all-star. Oh, yeah. Exactly. But, yeah. And I mean, I would... But Kuzma... I think is better than Love. Uh, so I think he has a better. I, I think here's the thing. Kuzma does more in the sense that he scores more, but I think there's an all-around thing that yeah. it kind of gets hidden behind. And him. like, might I just remind you that Kevin Love was one of the most was one of the best players like a couple years ago. And rebounders. And, yeah, rebounders. Uh, he was like when he was on the Timberwolves. I mean, that team was well, exciting to watch. Mm -hmm. I mean Ingram, Ingram and Kuzma. Yeah, so Sunez, Sunez, like, oh man, I don't, I don't know. All it's of a little, sudden, it's a little, it's a little shaky, you know. With well, Kuzma, I mean, because I mean, here, here's the biggest thing that I have with the problem with the Lakers: consistency. Mm -hmm. I mean, Brandon Ingram's oh, been great on. the last five games. Okay, last five games. Come on, dude. Well, I mean, uh, I mean, well, one thing I kind of want to talk about about the Lakers here: the trade deadline. You don't, you, you, you kind of give up on on Davis. Which, I mean, yeah, sure, they were sure. asking a lot for him. What was it? What but was then it, you seven but, players. You, yeah, yeah. yeah. Including but you, but you know which one of you know. But you know what they did instead? How about we get rid of one of the most popular like players on the Lakers, Vic Zubac for uh, Mike Scott? Yeah, I didn't. I mean, that I, was or like, Mike Scott. Zubac Scott. was Scott. Reggie Bull. I think, yeah. or, Reggie Bull or Mike Muscala. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, they made a series of moves there. I think Reggie Bullock was a good addition, but uh, Lakers are. Lance are, Stevenson are hasn't doing. been good at all. Lance well, I mean, what they're all these guys but on I mean, one-year deals as well. He wasn't. He wasn't terrible for the. I'm, is that going to lure? Is, is my question? Is that going to lure away like big name free agents to head to the Lakers? Only, only time. But I mean, there's so many suitors now. I mean, mm. I'm hearing the Bucks have can create enough cap space. I mean, it's Milwaukee, but you're playing with Giannis. Uh, the Clippers. Uh, I've Chris always Middleton been there. As well. Yeah, yeah, you're always been there with Clippers. The Knicks. Uh, the Knicks. Oh yeah. Celtics. yeah, yeah. Let's go to the Knicks. The Celtics, Celtics. could make uh, some big yeah. trades because they so have. I, I think I think it's always a question of you know yeah. is a, a a city like the media market obviously LA is it but is Kawhi that enough? Kawhi could go to LA. To oh yeah, there we go. He loves it. And in also Toronto. the other thing is that other thing is that oh. Yeah, shout out to Ron. <laughs> Yo, dude, he loved it. Drew, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on to the last wrangle. Uh, 30 seconds, no one interrupts. Kieran, start. I'm going with the usual baseball. This offseason, very surprising. Machado and Harper were both on the market for like 150 days. Um, and they now have the two biggest contracts in the history of the MLB. Machado, um, 10 years, $300 million with the Padres. Padres are a team that I think will be really good in three years. They have Fernando Tatis, which is Keith Law's number one prospect in the MLB. And then they also have a number seven prospect. And then Harper to the Phillies, 13 years, $330 million. That is the richest contract in the history of the MLB. And he obviously, his mind's still a little bit in D.C. His press <laughs> conference yesterday, his first quote was, I hope I can bring a title back to D.C. <laughs> he got traded to Philly, but I think he's going to be a good fit there as they have picked up. They have some good acquisitions that this offseason as they got two of the biggest names, J.T. Riamuto, uh, a great catcher, and then Bryce Harper. They got Riamuto out of Miami, too, which is yeah. nice. Mm -hmm. That was a great trade for yeah, them, by the way. Pass torch CJ. That's me. Well, I'm keeping it weird as normal. 
Go to the Overwatch League. Dubai, keep, open keep, in keep, Dubai. Keep, there we go, yeah. Anyway, well, if anyone remembers last year, if you were watching with the San Francisco Shock, and remember how they were just awful every year, well, we finally turned that around. Minus the loss, the close loss to the Gladiators out of L.A., minus the absolute drubbing to the Vancouver Titans, which was just embarrassing. If I watched the highlights, it was embarrassing. We're right now in fourth place overall. I'm really happy for this, especially since we finally got, we got rid of some guys we needed to, and we imported one more from Boston who was perfect. So I'm really hoping, you know, they, they get it out and get that number one seed. The only problem is their next match is against the top team, Excelsior, out of New York. So Kieran knows that oh, Excelsior is going to win. Yeah, so. Nate? What's what's happening down under me? <laughs> I'm not going with something from Australia. Uh, I'm actually going to be uh, heading over to Indianapolis for the NFL Combine and talking about uh, ESPN's new best friend, DK <laughs> oh, Metcalf. Oh, dear. I see that. Two Six foot three, Zion. 228 pounds, and 1.6% body fat. I mean, NFL scouts are like, we have to get this guy, especially with a 4.3340. Um, a 40-inch vert, uh, 27 reps on the bench. I mean, this guy, he's going to be a really exciting player to watch in the NFL. I'm not saying he's going to be a star, but all athleticism, he's going to be uh, really fun to watch. All right, so for my last 30 seconds, I was going to talk about how Andrew Bogey is getting some interest, but I will stop. I mean, I will not focus on that. Instead, I'll do a little bit of three questions rapid fire with Hannah, who's been sitting here questioning what... CJ is talking about. <laughs> uh, okay, so, oh, yeah, so this is a video. So you're talking about video games as a sport? <laughs> All right, three quick questions, real quick. We got a minute. Favorite shoes? Do you, does it matter? Uh, any Nikes. All right. Uh, yeah. Favorite spot on the court? Um, probably right above the, like kind of the opposite from the point guard spot. Uh, favorite shot? Like three point shot. Okay. <laughs> Steph Curry. All right, and then, uh, oh, what team are you looking forward to playing next year at Pac-12? Oregon. Okay. Oh, Yay. I like that. There you have yeah, it. They have a, they that have a good is team this year. Hannah Jump. We are sports sit down. <laughs> this is a special episode of Hannah Jump playing Pinewood basketball. Thank you so much, Hannah, for Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Dub on Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> that is for the sports sit down. I'm Sine Sangani. This is Nate. I mean, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm How dare you? I'm not Nate. Nate. CJ. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.